the second charge against educators and against education is lying about character building lessons and anti-bully lessons are included in the character building lessons respecting human authorities is one of the lessons of character building and when you are forced to respect human authorities for no respect from human authorities you are being gullible thus victory for human authorities and you will not get any positive consequences after respecting human authorities and human authorities get away with fraud have any person had that negative experience take it from mrs puff from the spongebob square pants episode summer job mrs puff had to work at the crusty crab to pay for the vandalism of the Krusty Krab before Eugene Krabs and Spongebob Squarepants criticized Mrs. Puff's hard work. Telling the truth is another lesson of character building. And human authorities taught you to tell the truth. Do you remember the experience that you got in trouble for telling the truth during your juvenile years? And I know that horrific experience. There are times that educators slash human authorities do not want to listen to another person's truth because educators slash human authorities are always right by their legal pride and educators slash human authorities are being hypocritical by lying to the pods even though educators slash human authorities teach pawns not to lie and educators slash human authorities get away with lying because they have seniority. When a person in authority threatens you with punishment by not respecting his slash her authority, example of blackmail, that is a red flag of bullying. And that is one piece of evidence that human authorities are guilty of bullying. According to Syndrome from The Incredibles 1, you cannot count on anybody, including your heroes. Let us never forget that educators slash human authorities are being hypocritical with their anti-bullying campaigns even though they support anti-bullying campaigns. Educators slash human authorities have the behaviors of a bully when you observe their behaviors. I have a sixth sense thanks to my autism and let us never forget that educators slash human authorities are not taking responsibility for their actions by hypocrisy when those same educators slash human authorities taught the students to learn to take responsibility for their actions. The third charge against educators and against education is enforcing policies that require permission from parents slash guardians. I believe that permission first phase is the luck phase in life like games of luck. 
there are some assignments that require permission from parents slash guardians like science experiments and like field trip assignments. Parents slash guardians can fail the students automatically by not giving permission on purpose. Other examples of events that require permission from parents slash guardians are internet usage, parking permits, going to a different residence after school, extracurricular activities, early grade promotions, exemptions on a final test, and job permits. There are some policies that a student needs permission from a parent or from a guardian to see a PG rated slash PG 13 rated movie in school. There are some educators believe that PG slash PG 13 ratings are treated like R ratings. Thank you very much for always being right all the time with your political correctness of parental ratings. And with your self-righteousness of parental ratings, MPAA, if MPAA's opinions are declared as absolute truth by being selfish against opposing people like me as an ethical, legal, correct practice, I like to have my opinions to be declared as absolute truth against opposing people as an ethical, legal, correct practice. Another policy from some schools is that a student needs evidence from a parent or from a guardian about a student's absence to declare an excused absence. Students have breaking points too when they are tired of the slavery from educators. Should getting permission from a parent or from a guardian count as Getting assistance from a parent or from a guardian when students are not allowed to get assistance from their respective parents slash guardians? Should the juvenile student instead of the parent slash guardian be controlling his slash her life like going into the real world. After all, the juvenile student is the one who goes after the high school diploma, not the parent slash guardian. Thanks to policies that require permission from parent slash guardians, the educators and the legal people are on the side of the parents slash guardians, not on the side of the students. And thanks to policies that require permission from parents slash guardians, parents slash guardians control the fate of the juvenile students. There is such thing as failure of an assignment to person A for not getting permission to specific third people because third people want to fail person A on purpose and because third people do not want person A in society. Not only the permission first policies happen to 
K to 12 life as a student, but the permission first policies also happen in general reality. Not giving permission of any type frequently is selfishness, and selfishness counts as murder. If superiors do not give any type of permission to inferiors, we are no longer a national team. We all are on the same team, God's team, to be more productive and see 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 9 to 15. The fourth charge against educators and against education is caring about money more than caring about the students thanks to liabilities. Unaffordable tuition, unaffordable parking permits, unaffordable book fees, etc. Thanks to the requirement of having a written physical for extracurricular sports, schools and athletic associations are helping health clinics to gain money. When a student fails educators conspiracy or no educators conspiracy or when a student gets expelled educators conspiracy or no educators conspiracy a student will not get a refund thus caring about the students or parents slash guardians money do educators think that juveniles are born with money educators think that students are an asset but thanks to charging the students for school fees educators made students as liabilities we are born without money and we will die to eternity without money part three will continue next time